I'm Frank DeFord, and this year we celebrate a, a very special milestone in the sport of harness racing, the 75th anniversary of its greatest race. In the next hour, we'll look at the horses and the people and the compelling stories that have made this event a classic. Now, rarely does one individual determine the course of a sport, but such was the case with harness racing when a colt was foaled in Orange County, New York on May 5th, 1849. His name was Hamiltonian. And today in North America, every harness horse traces pedigree to this single sire. And there was no question then that when it was created, the most important race in the sport should bear the name of its most important horse, the Hamiltonian. The namesake Hamiltonian was found shortly after his birth with his mother, beneath a tree in the pasture on the farm of Jonas Seely. The discovery was made by a hired hand, William Rizdick, who grew so attached to the colt that Seely agreed to sell him both the mare and the foal. Rizdick had to go into debt to come up with the money, but he was so convinced that his fortune lay with the colt that he managed to get the loan and took his prized possessions down the road to his own small farm. The name that Rizdick selected for his colt stemmed from a village in Yorkshire, Hambleton, which was the site of one of the most ancient race meetings in England. The colt was actually registered as Hambletonian 10. He was exceptionally well-bred, a great-grandson of the thoroughbred champion, Messenger. And Rizdick put Hamiltonian to stud at the age of two. Before he died 25 years later in 1876, Hamiltonian had been bred to over 1,900 mares, producing more than 1,300 foals. Not surprisingly, he was called Old Bull for these prodigious efforts, making Rizdick a rich man. In today's dollars, Hamiltonian stud fees ranged as high as $5,000 a session, and he made as much as $200,000 a year. His progeny soon ruled the tracks. In the 1920s, three visionaries decided that harness racing needed a classic event. Harry Reno, a promoter, conceived the event as a futurity for three-year-old trotters. John Bauer, who owned and published the magazine Horse Review, and his Grand Circuit reporter Joseph Markey enthusiastically supported the idea of such a race in print. Naming the race for the great father of the standard bread made the proposal that much more popular. And so it was that the industry was invited to bid for the rights to the inaugural Hamiltonian. The sealed offers were opened on New Year's Day, 1926, and Syracuse won with an unprecedented purse of $70,000. A group of sponsors formed the Hamiltonian Society. Their mission was to administrate the Hamiltonian, a responsibility that continues to this day. A field of 14 faced the starter in that first Hamiltonian on August 30th, 1926. Nat Ray drove Guy McKinney to victory for owner Henry B. Ray, no relation to the driver Nat. Mr. Ray returned home to Pittsburgh nearly $50,000 richer, carrying the tall silver trophy presented to him by Jimmy Walker, the mayor of New York City. In the next three years, the Hamiltonian moved between Lexington, Kentucky and Syracuse. In 1929, an historic event occurred which has never been repeated. There were eight entries in the race. Walter Cox trained four of them, and they finished one, two, three, and four, with Cox driving the winner, Walter Deer. Entrepreneur and promoter Bill Kane, the owner of Walter Deer, very much wanted to host the Hamiltonian himself and he had the required track in Goshen, New York. The formal announcement was made in February and the Hamiltonian was on its way to Goshen. He spared no expense to turn Good Time Park into a beautiful little oasis of uh, rural tranquility just an hour from New York City uh, for that week, uh, Hamiltonian week.